Hello, how are you? This is the Solo Negocios video blog, and this is going to be a summary of the news of the week in the economic uh, perspective and the legal framework of Mexico. Well, uh, in EGI, the Statistical Agency in Mexico reported this week that the trade balance went into deficit, at least for the part of uh, merchandising, not necessarily with all the elements, including of it, it will be uh, released later on the full uh, trade balance, but at least the, the merchandising part uh, is going into deficit into 20, 2021, which is regular uh, a trade deficit since Mexico went into open markets since 1986 and, and specifically since uh, the NAFTA deal originally was signed and entered uh, into exercise in back in back in uh, 1994. Excuse me. Also, in the he reports that uh, international uh, travelers came into Mexico in 2021, 27.8% more than in 2020. But we are not yet back into pre-pandemic data, so we will be foreseeing what what will happen with this recovery in the future. But one of the, the, the figures that uh, were pretty good includes the, the total expenditure of these people. It was 148% more than 2020. And it was for two, two thousand two $2 billion, we can, we can say $2 billion. And the median expenditure per person or per capita $426. So it, it is uh, an amazing growth because even pre-pandemic data, it, was, it used to be in, 20, in 2019, $221. So it increased a lot uh, this last, uh, mainly the, 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 the December holidays, but obviously the, the, the whole year. The consumption in Mexico, specifically for October, it went up 0.2%. 6.8% uh, in uh, yearly comparison. The, the slope of the graph, it's around 30%. So it's improving slowly, but uh, in a good mood, in a good shape. The one that is not improving is the private investment. In October, it went in a zero perspective or zero change against September, 7.6% uh, in a yearly basis. Uh, construction or, or, or buildings, 0.6% less than the previous month, and uh, machinery and equipment acquisitions, 2.8% improvement. But the graph is not only uh, flat, but in beginning to decrease. So it's worrying, worrisome, because without investment, there's no growth. Well, in terms of union salary revisions in Mexico during 2021, it went down uh, 0.94%, it, it was not uh, down uh, since 2017. So this time uh, negotiations didn't uh, meant in real, real term increases in salary for employees under unions. So this is like uh, something maybe that can be understood given the pandemic, the pandemics, but in 2022, for sure there will be uh, incremental requirements for this matter. Industrial activity in Mexico went down in the month of November 0.1%. It went up in a yearly basis 0.7%. Specifically, electricity distribution, water distribution, and natural gas distribution went down 1.2% in a monthly basis, and also construction 0.6% down. The graph is simply flat. That's how, how we can describe the industrial activity. And again, industrial activity, but this time per uh, state, gave out uh, nine states in the month of September with a positive uh, result, and there are all other 23 states in Mexico with a negative result. Specifically, Chihuahua went down 1.2%. Obviously, manufacturing is there, and um, the question is, well, what about maquiladoras? But the thing here is that even maquiladoras could be harmed because of the problems in the, in the supply chain worldwide. So there might be some elements there back in September. 
In terms of one of the topics that are around worldwide labor laws are the digital platforms like Uber, Didi, et cetera, and it's associates or workers. Are they workers? Do they deserve labor law treatment? Or are they uh, associates and they should be treated under uh, mercantile law or, or corporate law? Well, in Mexico, there's been several discussions about this and they're bringing uh, an idea named flexi security to provide uh, social security uh, legal framework uh, to these workers as they name the they name name them by legislators from different parties even the right wing party so this will be discussed discussed soon for changes in the labor law in Mexico and obviously utterly increases in the prices of those services. In terms of the uh, chips, uh, SARS -CoV and the supply chain problems worldwide, well, we have that the amount of uh, chips not rendered in 2021 worldwide was 9.5 million chips. From those, 2.4 million were not dis um, distributed in North America. 2.3 million not distributed in Europe, 1.8 million not distributed in China, 1.6 million in Japan and South Korea. So the problems are mainly in, in, in Occident, isn't it? Well, Banxico, Mexico, you know, had a new uh, person in charge of Banco de Mexico back in January the 1st. Her name is um, Veronica. Rodriguez Ceja, if I'm not Victoria Rodriguez Ceja, excuse me. And one of the fears is that it will be fiscally trend the discussions, like how to favor the executive branch when Banco de Mexico is an autonomous entity. Well, the perspective of uh, in a forum made by ITAM and UNAM, two of the most important universities in Mexico, uh, resulted in the position that there's not necessarily that risk. The risk is that they, these, these people in charge of Banco Mexico, not only Miss Victoria, but also the rest of the board uh, at Banco de Mexico decision, decision board for, for the monetary policy, uh, will not necessarily be prepared to understand the full requirements and have the full tools mainly to respond uh, promptly to avoid inflation. But uh, from that perspective, to understand that Banco de Mexico will be making decisions in favor of the government, that's not something that is at hand, at least is as a result of this analysis. Another indicator from INEGI, now this one from the automotive sector, in terms of um, sales in Mexico, they went up 15.89%. Uh, in terms of production in Mexico, they went up 21%. And in terms of exports, they went up 21%. But this is only big vehicles, not the whole setup of the automotive industry production. So improvement in a, in a specific part, no? What else? Well, uh, given the increase of people being sick with COVID-19, the Ministry of Labor began a discussion given uh, the tests for the, for the virus, that there was a, a discussion that if companies could charge this for these tests to their employers, to their employees. But the answer simply is, is not legal, is not correct. But also from the perspective of the employers, they are saying, okay, that's correct, but the social security hospital agency that we pay every month should provide the tests because that's what we are paying for, you know? So there's that discussion there. Electric reform, the uh, energy, Mexican Energy Association is stating that if the electric reform passes as it is, it will be costly as of $7 billion to Mexico, a high cost that we cannot afford in terms of lost investment. 
uh, again with the unions and specifically the unions for radio and television in Mexico that accounts for 30,000 workers in 1,400 companies are asking for a 12% Salary, salary raise. Is it going to happen? I don't know, because these people rarely earn more money than the minimum wage. The minimum wage went up 22%. Uh, this is a midpoint. It might be negoci negotiable, but also considering what happened last year in, in real terms, 12% discounting the 7.3% um, inflation rate will be like a 4.7% raise. So it's not necessarily bad but it's an important increase to companies. So we will see if they can afford it. The Energy Information Agency in the United States uh, mentioned last Wednesday that there was a decrease on four, by 4.6 million barrels uh, from previous week to 430 million barrels in crude oil inventories in the US, which is 8% below the five-year average for this time of the year, which is worrisome. It's not a red uh, light that is showing just that, that, that the inflation is coming uh, greater than it is right now, but it's showing pressure over the structure costs structure in the United States. Also, the Federal Reserve released last uh, Wednesday the Beige Book. It deserves another program to talk about it. But remember, the Beige Book is the whole set of data that, that they use to make the decisions in December. So it's important to analyze it. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States uh, stated that producer price index increased 0.2% in December when it did 1% in November and 06 in October. So it's beginning to decrease the rate of growth, not the prices. So this is like a good news, you know, something good, but only for December. Let's see if it continues. The ISM replied too that in December prices went down in the manufacturing sector and also did, and, uh, uh, told by the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, that um, consumer price index increased 0.5% in December when it did 0.8% in November and uh, it increased also in October by 0.9%. So it's the rate is decreasing, the rate of growth is decreasing, and that's, that's good news. In terms of uh, the US, Mexico, Canada uh, agreement, Canada is uh, being summed into the panel against the US under the automotive industry. So it will be two against one. We will find out how it goes, but there are things to discuss in terms of uh, rules of origin. But also the US is claiming not yet in a, in a panel because it's not a law yet, but against the, the energy reform. They are saying that it is required Mexico to offer loyal competition in terms of energy. So they are claiming that and for sure politically there will be space for compensation in both spectrums. So we hope that it will not hurt that much. In terms of the electric reform, today it was released the calendar for the open forums at Congress, at Mexico Congress, to bring in discussions in February and March about this uh, proposed change by the executive branch. We'll see how it develops. In terms of the Department of Labor, it released uh, yesterday the uh, unemployment insurance weekly claims, which increased 23,000 to 230 initial claims. And the four week moving average for the whole uh, insurance uh, and, and inactive uh, weak, uh, insurance claims are uh, or went to 1.7 million with a decrease of 77,000. So it's keep decreasing the moving average of the whole people insured and claiming the, or with an open claim of insurance, it's keep going down and bringing data to pre-pandemic uh, figures, so it's it's good information. Also, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released today that uh, prices on import and exports in the U.S. went down. Not only decreased the rate of, of, of growth, but it went, but both went down. Imports went down 0.2 percent, and exports went down 1.8 percent. Good news for Mexico, given their exports are important for Mexico. 
and we just saw the, the trade balance. And this implies that in the near future, I mean, if this keeps occurring month after month, it means that in the near future, probably by April, in the best in the best chances, if not by July, we will see a decrease in inflation in Mexico. Also, inflation in Mexico compared to the rest of the world in 2021, Argentina was 15.9%, Turkey, 36.1%, 30 Brazil, 10.1%, Poland, 8.6%, Russia, 8.4%, Mexico, 7.4%. 7.4%. The US, 7%. The least inflationary country in this, uh, in this um, range of countries, Japan, 0.6%. Obviously, they still having their, their stagflation stagflation scenario. Also, gas, uh, gas prices in Mexico are uh, in 2021, given the Energy Regulatory Commission, report 11.6% increase. When back in uh, 2020, they uh, stood by 17 pesos, 80 something cents. So uh, basically an improvement there. Also, another important news, social security is registering high records on uh, uh, seek, seek uh, payment requests in Mexico, the social security, remember, is, is not only like, like a tax code or a, a, a tax coding figure, but also the hospital service, um, daycare service and, and other services for employees. Well, when an employee uh, is sick, they go for a sick, uh, payments leap from, from the social security system. Well, given COVID, it's been in high records. And now they shifted from 15 days sick period paid by the social security to employees given COVID to only seven days. And this is worrisome because COVID is not being something that is going to be solved in only seven days in the health of a person. The average time is rounding between 10 and 15 days. So we'll see what happens because after this period ends, people will, go, will have to go back to their jobs. Let's suppose that it is true that Omicron variant is, is uh, less aggressive, but the problem is not necessarily the aggressiveness on the health. The problem is that it will be highly spread, super spread uh, events uh, on, 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 on the location of their works. So this is worrisome, this, this uh, decision, given the, the expenses of the social security in Mexico. Well, a simple summary of what we had in Solar Negocios Radio during the week. Uh, on Monday, Guillermo Soria spoke about the new tax regime and its implications. It's important to hear that for Mexican companies under this umbrella. On Tuesday, Emmanuel and Luis Enrique talked about uh, current uh, topics on economic stances beginning the year. On Wednesday, I talked about productivity and the labor situation at the um, pandemic protocols that we have to take into account at companies for employees. On Tuesday, on Thursday, Jutec and Adriana Parada interviewed people from Senaltec to talk about their training programs in Juarez. And Today, Friday, I talked about several topics under the legal framework, the uh, uh, pandemic protocol, labor uh, topics for the year to 20, 2022. There are more labor topics, tax, uh, a tax summary of the changes for 2022, and some uh, US indicators that we talked about barely a few moments ago. And for the agenda on events next week, IMEF will have the quarterly economic perspective event on Wednesday. Uh, then on Thursday, the same organization under their energetic uh, committee, energy committee, committee, will have the topic hydrocarbons uh, volumetric control by the Internal Revenue Service of Mexico. And uh, on the same Thursday, ANADE, the labor lawyers uh, the, the business lawyers organization will have the topic, what will be 
under labor uh, laws for 2022. So we will discuss all of those events during the following week. And uh, as a final comment, well, it's been a, an important first week uh, or working week during this year. Obviously, many worked uh, since the first week. But the problem here is that it's become, becoming with a lot of information, mostly on tax terms for Mexico to understand the tax reform and how it will work. There's many things pending to resolve under that scheme and it affects everyone because even big companies that are not changing the regime, they will have impact in terms of their relations with their suppliers that are under that regime. Anyways, we'll keep in touch. Have a great weekend. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.